Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about air-operated double diaphragm pump surge dampeners and integrated surge dampeners. We call them ISDs. Uh, we're going to go over the overview, and let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump into this. My name is Andy Venegas. I'm the Applications Engineering Manager here for PSG California. There's my contact information there below. All right, so today what we're going to talk about, what's the opportunity or the problem, um, applications or the use case, we're going to be talking about potential failures, how would you solve it, what our product solution is, and what our uh, Wilden solution offerings are. So as far as product specifications, features and benefits, and high-level takeaways. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Okay, so what's the opportunity or the problem? So end-user applications is the use case. So think of this um, for beverage production, for food production, uh, any clean and place systems, paints, resins, or coatings. With the standard double diaphragm pump, what you're doing is it's a reciprocating pump. So inherent in that nature, your diaphragm pump is going to be shifting side to side from side A to side B. Now, in between the shifts, each shift is called a stroke. Two strokes consist of uh, two strokes make up one cycle. So in between those two shifts, you're going to have a momentary pause where the air valve has to shift and go over to the other side. In that moment, that's when there's going to be a pause in flow. So where that pause in flow is, you're going to get a reduction in that flow, and the output of the diaphragm pump gives you a pulsing, uh, pulsing output. So what the uh, pulsation dampener does is it takes a high point and the low point, and, and it compensates for it. So if you're thinking about beverage production, when you're filling bottles or filling perfumes, if you have a pulsing output, you're either going to underfill or overfill your product. And you don't want that because you're either going to have waste or you're going to have inconsistency. Um, if you look at it in food preparation, as we see in the top right corner here, it's the same thing. You don't want to overfill or underfill the totes. You want to have that same consistent uh, product flowing all the way through. So you can see here that there's a handle here right at the, uh, at the discharge of the pump. So when that tote comes to the level that they need it to be filled, a user will actually close that valve or it's either a fast closing valve or it's gonna be a shutoff valve. So when they stop it, that pulsation is gonna to wanna to rush back into the pump. As it rushes back into the pump, it creates water hammer. So water hammer is a spike in discharge um, fluid pressure. They can actually go back, hit those valve balls and do damage to the valve balls, to the, to the uh, to the hose, the, the hose fittings, where it'll either cause leaks, cause the connections to uh, come loose, or actually push the valve balls back into the pump where you can do some other uh, internal pump damage. So for clean and place systems, if you don't have a good laminar flow, that product will not give you a uh, consistent flow, and you could have some spots in those tanks that weren't properly cleaned. So it's very, very critical to have a good constant flow in clean and place systems. In paints, resins, and coatings, same thing as we show in this illustration, right? You've got a um, you've got the paint stream coming out of the nozzle. As the paint uh, starts to fill up those buckets, if you don't have a good uh, consistent flow, you're either going to underfill or overfill. Now, when you're doing coatings such as ceramic coatings, if you have any kind of pulsation in that uh, in the output. It's going to give you um, cosmetic uh, flaws. So uh, in ceramic coatings, you'll get a fish eye in the product where it, it just has those fish eyes in the final product, which don't look good. So you want, if you want a good laminar flow, we recommend using the, uh, the pulsation dampener. So another opportunity or problem that we get quite often is uh, customers will call complaining that their piping has failed or burst, right? With that pulsation uh, going on in the plumbing, it really starts to attack the, the joints, the welds, and it'll ultimately uh, cause uh, leaking, pipe bursting, ruptures, um, anything of that nature. You can see in some of these manual ones where they have flexible hoses, those flexible hoses, they have them either chained up or secured, or somebody's got to stand there and hold it, because if not, it's not like a garden hose where water just flows out of it. It's more like a whipping action. So that whipping action will either put a bending moment right on your nozzle from the pump on the, uh, on the discharge end, or it'll cause that, uh, that pump to just flay around um, kind of wildly. Uh, what you'll also notice too, on any of the plumbing in the uh, facility, they normally use a, um, a hanger, a piping hanger. 
So with that constant pulsation going on, the shaking, the rattling, you can see in this photo here, it actually causes the, uh, the U-bolts here to come loose. The nuts will come loose, the U-bolt comes off, and then now the pipes in the whole facility start shaking. And that sound kind of resonates through the whole facility. So uh, an easy way to, uh, to remedy that would be to use a pulsation damper on the discharge of the pump. Um, same thing here, just showing again more with some more flexible hose, um, whipping action and stuff that, uh, that we normally see in, uh, in typical applications. So how do you solve it? So as we can see here in this conceptual animation, you've got your, um, you've got your product coming into the inlet of the pulsation dampener. If there's a void in the flow, the pulsation dampener um, forces downwards to fill the void. If there's a pressure spike, the pulsation damper will, will be pushed upwards and it'll, um, it'll alleviate that, that pressure spike. So you can see here, each um, with the cadence of a diaphragm pump, you got this, the, the strokes coming in. So each of the high points is the high point of the discharge on the low point is where the, uh, the pump actually stops momentarily to shift over for the next cycle. So centrifugal pumps, it doesn't really have this much of an issue because they have a lot higher revolutions, 3,600 um, revolutions per minute typically, where a diaphragm, you're looking at uh, maybe uh, 3,000 cycles per hour. So we're a tenth of what a uh, centrifugal pump does. So therefore, those, those high and low spikes are a lot more evident on a diaphragm pump. So the pulsation dampener, what that does is it compensates for the low and the high points as shown in that uh, conceptual animation here. So in the top left here, you can see this is a typical flow output of a diaphragm pump. You've got your high pressure spikes, and then you've got your low pressure where there's no product there. Now, when the pulsation dampener is installed, the pulsation dampener gives it a lot, lot, laminar, a lot more laminar flow. So we can take up to about 82% of that pressure um, fluctuation out by installing the pulsation dampener, right? So how do we do this? So there's a few different types of dampeners that we, um, that we manufacture here. We have um, an inline dampener versus an integrated dampener. So our integrated dampeners um, are mounted right directly onto the pump this is an illustration of an inline dampener. You can see here, uh, it's in line with the plumbing. So as it comes off of the pump's connection, you've got the inlet coming in here. The air supply is teed in directly to the pump. So it's automatic. Whatever's air supply you're, there, you're feeding to your pump, you're also feeding up this connection right into the pulsation dampener air regulator body. So it has the same air supply that feeds the pump. So as your pump air pressure increases, as does your uh, pulsation dampener. So when it's in line, it's the, the plumbing's here. If you have to take it out of service, you have to shut the pump down, stop it, and either fill that, fill that um, the void in the plumbing to do any repairs um, to do that versus the, the integral surge dampener where you would just unscrew it right from the pump. You don't have to take anything out of uh, service. You just plug the, uh, plug the void that was once there. So dampeners are most effective the closer you put them to the pump. So we recommend um, within 10 pipe diameters from the discharge manifold. So this is a, an illustration of a two inch pump. So within 20 inches of the pump's discharge manifold, that's where you want to uh, install that pulsation dampener. Now, customers ask us, does it have to be installed horizontally or can you do it vertically? You can do it any way you want. It's pressure is pressure. It's gonna, it'll, uh, it'll work uh, whichever orientation you put it in. Right. Um, they also ask, should you um, how, how should you size this? So our service dampeners are set up uh, for the same size as the pump. You would uh, purchase the same size surge dampener. So if you had a two inch pump, you would also use a two inch pulsation dampener. If you use one that's too small, it's going to underperform. And one that's too large, you're going to um, you're going to overperform. So you want it to be um, use the same size liquid chamber as you, uh, you're using on the pump. And it also shares the same air pressure as the pump, so there's no need to uh, no need to set anything, uh, any kind of differential pressure. You just set it to the same pressure as the pump that it's running at, right? So another type that we have for an inline is the um, inline hygienic um, series dampener. So the hygienic series uh, is really nice. It uses the integral piston diaphragm. It also has the flow through design, right? So 
when the dampener uh, is mounted in this orientation, when there's a clean in place, the product will come through your piping, come right through the dampener and fully drain and drain through the bottom of the pump. So for clean in place, um, that's what we would recommend. Uh, in order to get the clean in place to work, it has to be mounted either in the full vertical position or at a 45 degree angle, right? If you go, if you try to mount this one horizontal, you can have some dead legs in that pulsation damper where some product uh, can remain entrapped there and grow bacteria. So if, for, uh, for clean in place, you want to have it vertical or at a 45 degree angle. Same thing with this one. You want to match it up to the same size um, of the pulsation damper to the same size of the pump. And it also feeds off the same airline supply, right? And this one is our new uh, integrated um, dampener. So we call it the ISD. It's the integrated surge dampener. And we say mount the uh, pulsation damper within 10 pipe diameters. Well, this one is actually being mounted directly onto the pump. So you can't get any closer than that. You have a pulsation damper that's directly mounted right onto the discharge manifold. So on most of our pumps, the plastic and the metal pumps, we do have a vertical port option. So you would simply remove the plug that's in the vertical port, screw in the pulsation dampener, and, and you're up and going in no time. You don't have to uh, alter your plumbing in any way. You just simply screw it on right to the pump. It also shares the same air supply, so it feeds in, tees in right off of your regulator, feeds the air supply for the pulsation dampener, and you don't have to do anything different to the discharge piping. If space is critical, um, this, these are uh, these are an excellent option. And these ones can also be installed horizontally or vertically, and you want to do it uh, uh, equal, equal to or larger than the pump size. So now we're going to take a look at the uh, at the video here, and we're just going to run through this real quick. Hello, my name is Andy Venegas with Wilden Pump and Engineering. I've been with Wilden for 30 years. In today's demo, we want to show you the P220 pump with and without an integral surge dampener, also known as the ISD. So in the demo, what we want to do is show you some of the things that people encounter every day in the pumping industry. So those three things are going to be the pulsation, the effects of water hammer, and also piping noise. So these uh, integrated surge dampener is going to help you to combat the effects of that. And we'll get into that demonstration now by showing you the P220 pump running without a pulsation dampener. So now we're going to run the pump. It's going to have 100 psi of inlet air pressure versus 90 psi of head pressure. And we're going to capture the gauge pressure here. So you'll notice the high side of the pressure and the low side of the pressure, which is about a 30 uh, PSI differential pressure. So each uh, P220 pump has a vertical port that's going to be drilled and tapped. Simply remove the one inch NPT uh, plug or one inch BSP plug for the international threads. We remove that and then we can uh, go ahead and thread in the inch of the dampener. Okay, so now that we have the pulsation dampener uh, mounted onto the manifold, we use the same airline coming off of your regulator so that it's the same pressure feeding the pump is the same pressure that's feeding the pulsation dampener. So we'll run it again now with the pressure. And now you can see that pulsation dampener. Okay, so why use a pulsation dampener? Well, three key reasons for using a pulsation dampener is one, to dampen the pulsation. What we showed you in the last demo was it gave it more laminar flow. So it dampened that pulse from, uh, that was 30 PSI, down to about 8 PSI differential pressure. One of the other um, key benefits for using a pulsation damper is to soften the effects of water hammer or pipe hammer. So as that pressure leaves the pipe and goes downstream, it's hit by a shutoff valve, that water pressure comes back at 8 times the pressure that it left, and it does damage to it. In some, uh, some instances, what we've actually seen is the valve ball will come back and get forced into the valve seat. This is the effect 
of the damage caused by water hammer or pipe hammer. And the pulsation damper will dissipate that hammering effect and take that into the pulsation, into the uh, pulsation damper. One of the other things that it does is also prevents some of the noise. So pipe noise just caused by the turbulence of the flow going around the valve balls will give you that ball chatter. The pulsation damper also helps to prevent the ball chatter in the pumps. And here is showing. So in this video, we're going to show the P200 using the ISD integral surge dampener. So the P200 is going to be running at 100 psi inlet air, 90 psi head pressure. You'll notice that the gauge pressure drops down to as little as 44 psi without a pulsation dampener. So next we're going to run it with the pulsation dampener by removing the one inch NPT on the vertical center port. So now that we have the ISD threaded onto the vertical port on the P200 pump, all we have to do is hook up the air supply coming right off the regulator into the ISD, turn that on, and what we're going to notice here is the pressure differential. Instead of going down to the 44 psi, it's going anywhere between 66 to 70 psi here on the gauge. And you'll notice it's more of a laminar flow now. Okay, so why use an integrated surge dampener? Well, for one, you want to have the dampener as close to the discharge as possible. You want to have it within 10 pipe diameters of whatever size it is. So if this is a one inch pump, you want to have it installed within 10 inches. By putting it on the top, that's as close as you can get. You're actually integrated into the pump, which makes for better dampening effectiveness. So some of the industry's uh, issues that we see out there without using a pulsation dampener, that pulsation effect on the uh, instrument is pretty detrimental. Uh, it causes damage to gauges, valves, piping, everything downstream of the pump. By using a pulsation dampener, it, it reduces the effects of damage caused by that pulsation. So another thing that the pulsation dampener does is it also reduces damage caused by water hammer or pipe hammer. So in a typical instance, if you have water hammer, that pressure coming back from the acceleration head is coming back at such a, with such a force, it'll cause damage to pumps and pump components. This one took the valve ball and actually pushed it right through a valve seat. Pulsation damper will absorb that energy before it gets to your valve balls, causing less damage to internal components. Another thing a pulsation dampener does is reduces the effects of noise in the pipe. So instead of having that constant thrumming pulsation, the water, the pulsation damper will mitigate that noise coming from the your check balls. So with that, that is the new one inch ISD in a P200 pump. Okay, so now we'll get to the poll questions. Okay. Um... I am launching the poll questions now. If you're in full screen, please close out of that so that you'll be able to participate. Um, that should be showing up now. I'll give everybody about a minute to answer those. All right, just another couple seconds. Okay, Andy, it looks like um, the majority of people said within 10 pipe diameters of the discharge manifold, um, we had 79% of audience members say that. Very good, and that's what the answer is, within 10 pipe diameters of the discharge manifold. That's going to give you your most effectiveness on the pulsation dampener. Okay, so let's move on. All right, so our Wilden Solution offering. So like we said, we had uh, the integrated surge dampeners. We also have our legacy surge dampener, um, and these are the product specifications for it. 
These are available in uh, XSD, which is uh, good for the ATEX um, rated pumps. So those are have the X in front of it, and those are denoted as the ATEX surge dampener. So XSD, those are available in the one inch all the way up to the uh, three inch size. Uh, we also have those available for uh, tri-clamp connections for our FDA model pumps and hygienic series pumps. And then we offer our SD standard surge damper models. These are the ones that have the plastic housing. The plastic housing means that they are not approved to be used in ATEX applications. So if you're pumping anything flammable, you would want to go towards the XSD series. Anything non-flammable, you can use the standard SD series. Um, diaphragm design on these are going to be either pie-shaped or easy install um, diaphragms or integral piston diaphragms that we have. These are all of the inline style pulsation dampeners. Um, and we have a wide range from, like we said, from the half inch all the way going up to a uh, three inch on these ones. Uh, you'll notice on the legacy dampeners, these will um, reduce the uh, reduction in the head pressure fluctuation by up to 66%. So 66% reduction in flow, you can see here what the uh, pulsation is with and without a dampener. So the XSD3 giving us the best uh, best case scenario there. You'll notice as the pump um, cycle frequency decreases, the pulsations swing a lot more. So the, the more you can uh, dampen that effect, the more you're going to uh, preserve any of your, any of your instruments, um, your pressure gauges, the flow meters, um, if you have any kind of pressure transducers, it's all very costly and expensive equipment. So without a pulsation dampener, um, they don't last long. Uh, I know our, our gauges in the test lab would last about 24 to 48 hours if left, um, if left in the pump without a, a pulsation dampener. Right. So now we're moving on to the, um, the metal ISD and the plastic ISD dampeners. Um, you can see they look a lot cleaner. They're installed directly onto the pump. They have a smaller footprint um, where they, they're not, uh, they don't have to be bolted on as an appendage. They just screw right onto the pump. Uh, the metal ISD are uh, available in the one inch through three inch. And those ones we have available with an NPT or BSP connection. The three inch pump will actually have the ANSI or DIN flange um, to be uh, bolted right directly onto a uh, center ported uh, flange for those ones. The plastic ISD is going to be uh, NPT, um, NPT option or BSP option pumps for the half inch and one inch models. And those are integrated right into the uh, pump. All of our manifolds now um, are vertically ported and threaded here at the factory and ready to, um, ready to accept the pulsation dampener. And these ones uh, go from anywhere from 58 to 81% reduction in the head pressure fluctuation. Right, and this is just showing you some more of the uh, ISD 820. This is the um, two inch flow curve down here below. You can see with and without the uh, pulsation damper, how it uh, gives you more of a laminar flow. Um, and the stainless steel that we use for these pulsation dampers is going to be a 316L material. The diaphragms that are in the metal pulsation dampeners are going to be PTFE. It's an uh, integral piston diaphragm, uh, PTFE with the Buna, uh, Buna and backup diaphragm. These are the operating uh, temperatures that they range for, and the max uh, working pressure is 125 PSI. All right. So for our plastic series, um, the integrated surge, integrated surge dampener is uh, has an NPT connection that uh, bolts right into that discharge manifold. Like we said, all the manifolds are already prepped for the uh, for the installation of a dampener. All you have to do is remove the plug and screw the dampener right into place. And these are going to be polyethylene um, housing material, and the diaphragm material option for these are going to be a PTFE with an EPDM backed uh, integral piston diaphragm. And these ones um, reduce that pulsation um, fluctuation 50 to 52 percent. Um, and the last ones we offer are the um, hygienic series pulsation dampeners or surge dampeners for the hygienic model pumps. These are good for uh, FDA, USP Class 6. Um, they're also ATEX rated, CIP capable. Uh, they got the flow through liquid chamber design, 32RA surface finish, 316L wetted path and use our patented, um, the, our patented uh, IPD diaphragms. So if you want best in class pulsation dampener, these are our, uh, our hygienic series pulsation dampener for the food industry. And these ones uh, 
cut that flow by 70 to 74 percent reduction in the head pressure fluctuation. Uh, these are all tri clamp connections on the ends, so they're they're always going to have tri clamp connections here. So, time for a uh, another poll question. Okay, that should be launching now. Again, a reminder: if you went into full screen mode, you'll need to exit out in order to see that uh, poll question and be able to participate. And I'll leave it up for about a minute. Okay, just a few more seconds here. All right, it looks like 91% um, said all of the above. Correct, and that's what it does. They, they, do, they dampen the uh, surge in the flow, they protect the downstream equipment, and they protect against water hammer. Um, and also one of the benefits too is the uh, the pump noise, right? So uh, we mentioned that in the video. So we get a lot of questions with people saying, hey, it sounds like your pump is self-destructing. That's just the velocity of the fluid that goes around those valve balls. It sends the valve ball into a uh, into a, a spinning frenzy. So as the valve ball is rattling in the ball cage, the ball is hitting each of the fingers that kind of guide that valve ball to, to the valve seat. And when it's not seeding, you're not pumping. You're just pumping product underneath that valve ball into the other liquid chamber. So you lose efficiency. Uh, the pump is a lot more noisy, and it sounds like it's beating itself to death. So the pulsation dampener with that laminar flow gives that uh, flow a lot, uh, a lot better, um, a lot smoother flow. So it's not so violent and turbulent in that uh, in that velocity of the fluid going around the valve balls. So that's another one of the. Uh, Another uh, benefit for the pulsation dampener. So if you move on to the next slide. All right. So why should you use a pulsation dampener? Right. Like we said before, it dampens the flow, protects downstream equipment, gauges, meters, plumbing, um, plumbing and plumbing support and any instrumentation. Now that's the, the expensive part of your oper operation. The pump is a very small um, small price in that whole total system. The expensive part comes in with your meters, the gauges, the, the plumbing. And if you can protect that investment, it's a small, uh, small price to pay on that. Um, like we said, once that valve ball goes through the valve seat, now you start to do internal pump damage. You're damaging the valve balls, you're damaging valve seats. Uh, in this photo here, you show the main. Sh it shows the main shaft that just gets, you know, just beat up um, from the deflection of the valve ball uh, hitting the outer piston and bending the end of the shaft lug off. Uh, it'll put a crack in the liquid chamber, bust the outer pistons. So that can all um, that can all be um, minimized by using that pulsation damper. So high level takeaways of the um, surge damper is. You know, of course, uh, seeing what the problem is. So if you, if anyone is experiencing this problem, pulse and flow, pipe shaking, broken leaking plumbing, ball chatter, broken instrumentation downstream, then you are the right recipients to be using a uh, pulsation dampener. And like we said, the pulsation dampeners, we have them available for all sizes of our pumps. And, and if you just match it up uh, correctly to your pump, it's going to save you a lot of headache down the road. So solution, going with the uh, integral surge dampener, ISD, either the, um, or the equalizer surge dampener, the SD or the XSD for the ATEX applications, or the sanitary hygienic series surge dampeners. By using any one of those that's, uh, that's fitted for your pump, it's going to help you uh, much more down the, down the line. And again, this is just the uh, the family uh, family photos of the uh, the pulsation dampeners. So our newest uh, 
our newest ones are going to be the integrated uh, ISD metal dampeners. We also have those available in plastic. We have the Legacy um, Hygienic Series. And just showing you how easy they are to, uh, to bolt onto the, uh, to the pump and protect your investment.